Thank you for welcoming me here tonight, and thank you so much to the PK Committee. I really appreciate this opportunity. I just want to let you know that I'm here to talk about racism, but mostly about how white people can become white allies. Don't know what that is? We'll get to it. First, I'm going to present my creds. Steve? Here I am in my previous profession and also at the White House. Yet and still, I've been called a coon, an effing nigger, and told to get the hell out of Montana right here on Main Street. Major racial inequities have been systematically institutionalized in North America for 20 generations. A key feature of systemic racism is that it has been socially propagated by uh, individuals, groups, and institutions here for 400 years. Most Americans' understanding of racism has been handicapped by a narrow and individualistic concept of racism. The fruit of the racist tree are murders, self-segregations, exclusion, and denial of rights. We'll talk about how you can begin to interrupt that. This image is what most black people see when looking at the Confederate flag. I want my country back is code for get that black dude out of the White House. Thug is generally code for nigger. Urban is code for ghetto. And you people is code for a lesser other. All parents have to deal with the birds and the bees talk, but we black folk, we have to give the talk as well. The talk includes recognizing racism, dealing with prejudice, and how to hold back any righteous anger from authority figures, police, school personnel, government officials. We are assaulted literally and figuratively nearly every day by the realities of living while black in a world controlled by whites. Like the time I was in a crowded deli line in a Bozeman grocery store when a man loudly accused me of being the gal who stole his wallet in the DC Metro. <laughs> Some may think it funny, but I assure you it wasn't in the least bit funny living it. Even worse than that bigoted insult was that no one around me said a thing. No one came to my defense. That bigot got away with it because of the silence of the white people around me condoned it. Archbishop Desmond Tutu said, once, if you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. If an elephant has its foot on the tail of a mouse and you say that you are neutral, the mouse will not appreciate your neutrality. I have a friend, white, who has a toddler child who is black. She has been called a nigger lover while walking in downtown Bozeman with her child in her arms. What would you have done or said if you had witnessed that? Race is there and it's a constant. Are you tired of hearing about it? Imagine how freaking exhausting it is living it. It's no wonder that so many African Americans suffer from hypertension, including me. <clears throat> What if a person at a party or in a conversation said something disparaging about black, brown, or Native American people in your presence? It must have happened to you more than once in your life. What did you do or say? Or did you leave it be? After four little black girls were murdered in a church bombing, Martin Luther King said, the victims say to each of us, black and white alike, that we must substitute courage for caution. They say to us that we must be concerned not merely about who murdered them, but about the system, the way of life, and the philosophy which produced the murderers. If there's any debate at all, it should be about the best possible ways to prepare yourselves and other white people to be true allies rather than silent white barriers to racial justice and equity. Think about it. Think about what you'll say when you encounter bigotry and racism. Think about it when you drive home tonight 
and over the next several days and weeks. Become prepared for the next time because you know, and I know, it will happen. Be proactive. Tell your family and friends that you're not keeping silent anymore. Team up with someone for mutual support. Write a letter to the editor. Learn and gather tools for yourself. Resolve to take action knowing that your liberation, yes, your liberation, and is bound up with mine from systemic and individual racism. This is white allyship. <clears throat> Determine that you'll call out racism for what it is when you see or hear it, whether it'll be in public, at work, or at your church coffee hour, yes, even at your place of worship. It is always the right time to do the right thing. Because if you say something, all of you, then it's likely that others will step in and have your back. If only one person had rebuffed that man, the bigoted man in the deli line, perhaps others would have joined in and I wouldn't have been all alone or been inspired to interrupt at another time. So again, all the white people here, which is probably 99.9%, .9%, you are in a position of privileged space that I don't occupy. Because of that, you can actually be heard on a much larger stage than the one I'm standing on right now. If you don't step up and stick to your values, when they are being tested and challenged, then they're hobbies, not values. So listen, stick to your values. Be allies. You can do it. Just take a deep breath and speak the truth, even if your voice shakes like mine is right now. You will be glad you did, and so will I. Thank you.